Welcome to the video on photosynthesis. This is where green plants synthesize or make food using sunlight. So in the last video, we learned about aerobic respiration. This is where people take in oxygen and food to make energy. Photosynthesis is how plants make food, and then in the same way, they make energy from that food as well. Now what plants take in is water from the ground, they need to be watered all the time, and CO2, so carbon dioxide, and they give out oxygen as part of the process. So the purpose of photosynthesis for these plants is to make food. So that's something you need to remember, often glucose. And for animals as well, there's a purpose because it creates oxygen for us animals to breathe. So there's two dual purposes, for the plant for food and for oxygen for us to breathe. So the reaction that you'll need to know for photosynthesis is that carbon dioxide plus water plus light, it needs light to happen, goes to sugar, this is glucose, plus oxygen. And again, the easiest way for you to do this is just to memorize this equation right here because it will come up again and again. Also, you can remember the word equation, just actually saying carbon dioxide plus water plus a photon or just saying plus light goes to sugar oxygen. But this is critical to remember because it shows what goes into photosynthesis and it shows what comes out of photosynthesis as well. Now let's look at how this fits into a cell. So we mentioned it's the process by which green plants make food. Now the reason that they're green is when we look at a plant cell, we have these organelles called chloroplasts. And this is where photosynthesis happens. This is where it all goes on. So we're gonna delve down and look really closely at these organelles, the chloroplast, and see how it works. So this is a diagram here of a chloroplast. And on this diagram, we've got an outer membrane for the chloroplast, an inner membrane for the chloroplast. Then working our way in step by step, we have what's called the stroma. So this is the middle, the space inside the inner membrane. We have something called the lamella, which holds everything together inside the chloroplast. And we have these little discs called thylakoids. Now you'll see lots and lots of them in there and they actually stack up. So a stack of thylakoids is called a granum. And this word granum is one of the most helpful words in your describing of this organelle. Now if we delve in in a little bit more detail, here we've got a thylakoid which has been cut in half and inside there's another space called the lumen. And it's this space between the lumen and the stroma where photosynthesis actually happens. So we're starting out right on a big cell level on the last slide. Now we're zooming down to look at one chloroplast, the organelle, and then there are these little discs called thylakoids inside. And it's between the inside of that and the outside of that, the stroma, that all of this actually happens. Now, this thylakoid is very, very flat so that it can absorb the maximum amount of sunlight. So remember, sunlight is critical to make the whole process happen. We'll look at that a little bit more in a second. And so therefore, if you have them flat, this disc here can be facing the sun and absorb the most amount of sunlight it possibly can and make the most amount of food for the plant that it possibly can. So here is a real photo. So every single one of these hexagons is a plant cell. And you'll see these green discs all the way through it. These green discs are the chloroplasts that we've been learning about. You'll notice that these discs are flat and they're almost all facing right up. And that again is to absorb the maximum amount of sunlight. Great, so now let's zoom in again. Now we've zoomed in on one of those little thylakoid discs that's inside a chloroplast. So we had the stroma, which is outside a thylakoid, and we have the lumen, which is inside the thylakoid. And then we have this disc, which holds it all together. So this is where photosynthesis happens. And this is a more complex diagram of the outside of this disc the membrane, if you will. And you'll see there's a whole lot of complex processes that goes on. But all you need to know is you take in water at the very start and light throughout the process. And at the end of it, you've made ATP, which is energy. Now these are all enzymes which help that process along the way. But your take home message is that in this space, some light comes in and hits it. That's why they need the flat discs that can collect a lot of light. Water comes in from the ground. That's why plants need water. And out comes ATP, which is energy for the cell to use. And before in our equations, you remember we talked about creating sugar. Now the sugar is just part of this process. It creates a sugar and then the sugar can create ATP at the very end. But I hope this makes sense how you're turning these two things right in the end into energy and sugar is part of that process. 
All right, so there's some factors which influence photosynthesis and how fast it can happen. And these are really useful for your explanations. So the first thing you need to know is that light intensity affects how much and how fast photosynthesis can actually happen. You need light in two places in this reaction. If you have lots of light, then all of these enzymes are gonna be cranking and it's gonna turn lots of water into lots of energy. So light makes it happen faster. And obviously without light, it can't happen at all. Now in the same way, if you remember us talking about enzymes, when you have a lot of reactants, a lot of substrate, and in this case, lots of carbon dioxide and lots of water, then lots more reaction is gonna happen. So in the same way, light is a critical part of this reaction. So if you have more light, more carbon dioxide, more water, then more reaction takes place. So these are the initial factors affecting photosynthesis. The second and final factors really affecting it are these enzymes, and that comes back to temperature. So this, as you can see, is really reliant on lots of enzymes doing their jobs. And so at a cold temperature, enzymes work slowly. At a high temperature, enzymes work quickly. And so more energy is gonna be created. Again, if you get them too hot, these enzymes or these proteins are gonna denature, they'll be ruined and they won't work anymore. No photosynthesis will happen. So these are the factors that affect photosynthesis. All right, here's what you need to know from the video. The first thing, photosynthesis is how green plants, the chloroplasts are green, make food using sunlight. It's glucose, and that glucose gets turned into energy. Now the purpose for plants is to make food for energy. The purpose for animals, which is also important, is they make oxygen for us to breathe. Now this occurs in leaves. Now, as you'll know, leaves are very flat, so they can absorb the most amount of sunlight, and there's gonna be more on this in video six. But also within that, there are chloroplasts within every single cell that are also very flat, so they can absorb the maximum amount of sunlight. And these thylakoid discs, they're flat, so they can absorb the maximum amount of sunlight. It's all optimized, so the most sunlight will be collected and the most photosynthesis will happen. And you're gonna to need to remember all of these names, particularly the thylakoid, the granum, and the lumen. They're the particularly helpful ones when you're explaining your answers. All right, so the factors that affect photosynthesis. One, you need light intensity. More light means more photosynthesis. In the same way, you're gonna need more reactants because as well as needing light to make this happen, you need water and carbon dioxide. Finally, there's temperature. If it's warmer temperatures, this is gonna happen faster because the enzymes can work faster. But remember, only up to a point because then the enzymes stop working when it gets too hot, they get cooked. Let's look at a question now. So the process of photosynthesis is critical to the survival of plants and other organisms that depend on plants for their food and for their oxygen. Now the rate of photosynthesis, how fast it happens, changes from plant to plant. It varies with the time of day and with the season, and it depends upon the location and distribution of specialized organelles that we know are chloroplasts within the plant itself. So we're gonna discuss the process of photosynthesis, and we're gonna consider the following points. One, we're gonna look at the purpose of photosynthesis. Two, what do you need for photosynthesis to occur? Three, the structure and function of the organelle where photosynthesis takes place. And four, reasons for change in the rate of photosynthesis, so reasons that affect how fast it happens. So let's go through them one by one. First of all, the purpose. The purpose of photosynthesis for plants is to make food for energy, and for animals, it's to make oxygen to breathe. Now when we look at what actually happens, what's needed for this to take place, we know there are some reactants and some products. The easiest way for us to write this down is remembering this equation. So carbon dioxide plus water and light go to glucose, sugar, plus oxygen. And again, you can write that down as a sentence. Write them both down if you possibly can. Third, we're gonna look at the structure of this organelle. Now we know the organelle is the chloroplast. So we can draw the outer membrane, the inner membrane, the stroma, which is a space in here, the lamella that holds it all together, the thylakoid, these discs, the granum, the stacks of these discs, and inside these discs we have a lumen. And remember, photosynthesis takes place between the stroma and the lumen here, on this membrane space, on this membranous space, on, this ed on the edge of this disc space here. 
So we can, as well as labeling a diagram like this, also explain it in words. We can say within plant cells there are chloroplasts. This is the specialized organelle you need to know. These chloroplasts have many flat thylakoid stacks called granum. This is surrounded by a stroma, and inside each thylakoid there is a lumen. Now photosynthesis happens in the membrane between the lumen and the stroma. It's where light energy is turned into ATP, if you'll remember from that diagram. All right, now let's look at the last point. Now I've tried to explain this in lots of detail. You don't need to give quite as much. But it's talking about the things that affect the rate or how fast a photosynthesis happens. So it says the time of day and seasons can have different effects. But the main effects are light intensity, how much light can get there. The amount of reactants, which we learned about, the amount of carbon dioxide and the amount of water, and temperature. So as light intensity increases, the plant can perform photosynthesis even faster because there's more light. Again, as temperature increases, the proteins or the enzymes can work faster. Only up to a point though, because remember, too hot and they'll get cooked. And finally, an adequate supply of reactants, so this is the carbon dioxide and water, is important to make sure that photosynthesis continually happens, so you don't run out of things to make the sugar with. And finally, we can say the position of the cell within a leaf will determine the level of light it receives. So we're going to look at this in level 6. You can imagine if these cells or all the chloroplasts are right at the top of the leaf, going to get maximum sunlight, and we'll learn that later on. So in conclusion, the rate of photosynthesis changes from plant to plant, and just repeating back what the question said, the time of day and the season alter it because of the amount of light, and possibly in summer there might not be as much water or something like this, but unlikely, but it's much more likely to be the amount of light that reaches the leaf. So when you're talking about a specialized organelle, the location of these affects how much sunlight again is collected. If you have them near the top of a leaf, that collects more sunlight. Also, if the leaf is in a sunny spot so it's not covered up by other leaves, that's going to collect more sunlight. And that is the reason that all of these variations can occur. So that is photosynthesis.